uno. I don't know. This audience doesn't seem to understand. Did, did Alyssa do a set? I, I did. Alyssa did do a set. Okay, so you got to be very emotive for a, a taping. So let me hear you make as much noise as you possibly can. <laughs> doesn't sound bad at all. Wow. Doesn't sound bad at all. So uh, now, many of you, you may be new to the Vicky and Vinny show, and I'm going to tell you what we're doing because we should tell them how it started and what we're doing. And yeah. Right? Yeah. So we started doing this at our club in New Brunswick at the beginning of COVID. We've been shut down now since, uh, it's been about what, 10 years since COVID started? It feels like it. It feels like 10 years. It's been a long time. And, uh, and we started doing it with no audience. Yeah, we, we started with no audience. And actually- it's, Is your mic on? I don't know, it, it barely, Can I, get, I don't know how I'm like leaning in. I don't know I can't hear on. Vicky, can you turn her up? No, no, I think, I think it's on. I uh, just think that I'm awkwardly, cause I can't get it down. All right, I'm let me help awkwardly you. like leaning. It's you fine. Agree, there should be somebody that just comes up here and does that. You should. It should be set for you here. No, it's fine. Okay. You don't have Thank the COVID, you. do you? We just switched mics. Well, I All hope right. not. We made out earlier. All right, good. So good. So you were saying. So um, it really started because we wanted to do a free show to um, all of our our customers and anyone. Online, an online, online free show for people right. that, this girl is looking at us very suspiciously. It was an online, <laughs> she's making me nervous, online free show. Right, because that was in the height of the shutdowns. Like, so during the shutdown, um, you know, everybody was, you know, sad, you're inside. They were shut down. Well, yeah, but it was a very sad time, so. It wasn't sad, it was annoying and frustrating. No, a lot of people had, so we wanted to give back. We yeah. wanted to give back. Yeah. So we started doing the show and then the show grew, and then we met, we'll talk to them later, we met our musical director. That's right. We met our musical director, and then we started sneaking a few people in live before the shutdown was shut down, right? Yeah. They we were had, all socially distant. Yes, we did. You know what we started doing? <laughs> because no one was looking, we started putting people in the audience a little bit at a time, and, uh, and then, am I allowed to say that? No. Yeah, no, was, you're no. not allowed to say that. We had people in there live and they were loving it. They, very much unlike you. They were loving it. They were fun and they were excited. Todd Hartpence was bringing everyone desserts. Oh yeah, that was We nice. were having mm -hmm. after show pot parties. No, no, no pot parties. We never had yeah. a pot party. But anyway, we were having a lot of fun doing it. And then when they opened up, we started doing the show to a lot of people. Right. Right? So mm -hmm. in New Brunswick, we normally do like 150 people a night. 
yeah. on the show. This is our first one in Connecticut. I hope you have fun, and I hope also that you go home and tell your friends to watch the show and enjoy the show. And thank you for coming out tonight. Give yourself a yeah, little bit of love. Thank you. Love. Thank you. And those of you, those of you who don't know, we opened this club what in May. May of 2018. To May 2018, and we invested a ton of money mm -hmm. in downtown Bridgeport. Uh, and everyone said to us, "We're nuts for going to downtown Bridgeport." Yep. But we love this city, right? And yeah. we love the club, and we will make this club the best club in all of Connecticut. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna take a little work. Uh, you know. And we bought the restaurant next door. We bought the restaurant yeah, next door. Yeah, the furniture was delivered during COVID, so that was super uncomfortable, like not, not being open for it, but yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, we got it. We had our furniture delivered next door on March 16th. So right after the shutdown. One day after Ned Lamont said, everybody stay home. Yeah. We got all our furniture delivered, and so we just reopened that up again, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's it. So now we'll just go into what we, what we want to talk about tonight, because we had a very big week, right? We did have a big week. Vicky had a very big week. Uh, so this is what happened today. Vicky was very frustrated today. She doesn't like driving up here we with me. We live in New Jersey, so it, we, we, we have to commute up yeah. here. Yeah. And you don't like driving with me. You're a terrible driver. No, I'm a fast driver. I'm a very good driver. People in Connecticut could learn a lot from me. 95 would move if I could just give everybody in Connecticut one driving lesson. The whole state would be like, ah, we love Vinnie Brand. And they would want to drive with right. me. So there's a long line of cars in the fast lane, <laughs> but there's a long line of cars all ahead of us. And Vinny will ride up right behind them, start flashing his lights. And I right. say, Vin, where are they going to go? Where? There's a long line of cars. And what they, are you doing? He's and like, they got I, out of the way. Yeah. So he likes to move people one at a time to get out of his way. So he just then he runs up to the next car, flashes his lights, and he just keeps doing it until they move out of the way. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to drive. That's what makes traffic flow. Did you see the line of people behind me going, ooh, finally someone knows how to drive, and there was a whole line of people behind me, and they were doing the right thing. They were giving everyone the finger as we went by. It was perfect. I moved them. They gave the finger. No one got hurt. And uh, so here's what happened today. You didn't even know you did it. What? So Vicky was all frustrated this morning, and uh, she's like, ah, you know, I don't want to drive with you, and yada, yada, yada. And then you started swifting. I love my Swifter. If you, uh, honestly, if you need a, a cathartic moment, you just get that Swifter out. And I'm telling you, as God is my witness, my mom said for years, get a Swifter, get a Swifter. And I was like, fine, I'm not getting a Swifter. Wait, first of all, I want you to know, everyone here is looking at you like, hey, we're from Connecticut. We have people that right. do that for us. <laughs> you, yeah. Connecticut, wealthy. You think that woman who just came in late is ever going to Swift anything? Yeah. yeah. She's not a Swifter. She came in late. So you love your Swifter. You go around and you collect. Yeah, you just love it. Yeah, I do. I, I go around. I go around all the edges of the walls. It's very, it's very, com it's very calming. It made me laugh because after you got done swifting, you said, "I feel better now, and I can drive with you." I'm like, all you have to do is clean up the house. <laughs> yeah. It made me very happy. So, uh, so, what else do we want to talk about? We definitely want to talk a little bit about Meghan Markle, right? Yeah, so, you know, big news, big news. I know you guys are probably like, big news is really that Trump has COVID, but no, no, no. Big news in our house is that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. So he's not a prince. No, oh right. I don't he's know what just he's called. Harry. Yeah, and Harry's Harry. unhappy. I don't know if you read that. Harry is unhappy, and I'm like, yeah, because now Harry has to wipe his own rear end. And why he didn't just stay a prince? Now he has to run and get detergent and do all the things that normal men have to do. They don't have to do that though. Still, what so. Is that? Because they have, like, millions and millions of dollars. Yes, that Prince Harry's full of shit. Yeah, he is. Because they said that they wanted their privacy, and that's why they left the royal family. And then they inked a $100 million deal with Netflix to showcase their life. You're like, what? Yeah. Which yeah, no like, one wants to see. Nobody no. cared. Right? I liked her better when she was just holding a suitcase on TV. That was her. Oh, that was... Um, what, who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. No, it was... No, uh, uh, Whatever it was. Yeah, it was the TV Howie Mandel game thing. show. Yeah. Yeah, some game show. So, and then, of course, our soccer game. Right. So, the biggest news of the week is our eight-year-old scored her first goal, and she didn't score one goal. She scored two goals. Two goals. Yeah, two youth. goals. Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Okay, it's a very, it's a serious, you don't have kids yet, right? You're too young. Let me tell you something, young lady. It's a very serious soccer league. It is a Christian soccer league saint 
what's it called? St. Mary's. Mary's. St. Mary's Christian soccer, just like Jesus wanted. There's one Jewish kid, he doesn't even get, he's not even allowed to play. He just sits on the bench and keeps track of the score. But she scored two goals. Right, but Vinny's our, our, our daughter's coach. And I'm the whole team's coach. But yeah. Yeah. Right, he's the whole team's coach. Yeah, I think they knew that. Like, well, the way you said it. Well, I, you know, so, but he gets a little intense. A little okay, intense let me explain in, in, in St. Mary's how, wreck. Let me explain to you how ridiculous it is she tells me that I'm intense. Okay, so before the game, here's Vicky. Remember, it just... It's just youth soccer. You get too carried away. You gotta calm down. Don't yell. I'm like, why'd you make me the coach? She's going, you gotta be relaxed. It doesn't matter. And then our daughter scores, okay? And all I can hear from the soccer goes, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> it's exciting the first time your child scores. Yeah. But did you say to the other team, in your face? No, I did not yes, say you that. Did. I did you said not. something it's like that. So full of it. Yes, you did. You said, eat it, fat goalie. No, I never <laughs> said that. <laughs> you were so, very, you yeah. were overexcited. I was overexcited, but Vinny, with these little girls, he, I think he thinks they're a travel team because he's always like, move, 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 let's go. And he doesn't know any of the girls' names. So he's like, you little 17. And the little girls, they don't know the numbers on their back. They're like, what? Who are you talking to? Right, right. Yeah. And let me ask you a question. Who took a picture of the post-goal celebration? Me or you? What, what do you mean? That would be you. Yeah. And, Vic, <laughs> and then Vicky goes, I'm going to send you this picture. I need you to post it on Facebook because I don't want to look like a bragger. Yeah. <laughs> That's rude. That's rude. But we won. And that yeah, was a good Yeah, we won. It was a good and time. And did our team look better? Yes, because you're teaching them all the rules. But the one little girl said... You know, Coach Vinny, he's so impatient. He's always going, hurry, hurry, quickly. hurry. The word is quickly. Well, I don't know. She's I seven. yell quickly to the girls yeah. because they're little kids and they don't know how they got to get into the, they have to understand what life's about, mm -hmm. right? As an American, your life is very important. You are designed to crush other people's expectations. Like we're not allowed to keep score, but when we win, we're not allowed to tell them. So I just say, listen, I can't tell you who won or lost but we scored more than them. And then the girls figured out on their own. And that's how you make a team strong by letting them know. Right. That's, right. Yeah, it makes right. you mad. Now, Vicki, you know I'm dying to do what we do every week. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and tonight, Joe is playing with di a different band. A different a band, band. A band from up here. Can we light the band up, please? Well, because no I'm one's so there. excited about this. There, uh, there they are. <laughs> come on over, boys. <laughs> yeah, come on in. So this is Joe Coonan, who's I with us. I want Connecticut week. to meet Joe Coonan. Yeah. Joe Coonan, Joe. step to the mic, Joe. Get a guitar on, step to the mic. So what's going on? That's Joe Coonan, everybody. And I want you to know something. You are looking at the future of rock and roll right there. That guy is absolutely great. Now, I don't know the rest of the band. I do know by looking at you guys that there have been some arrests in your past. Uh, I, I think their names are John and Greg, right? Yeah. John and Greg. Yeah, I, well, I, guess I, I noticed the one guy, he was in that painting of The Last Supper. Now, <laughs> so, so Joe, this is, this is your brand new... They've got the look, man, for sure. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and they're good, right? Yeah, man, we've been yeah, having fun Yeah, I heard so you far. guys... Now, I need you to understand something, okay? True musicians just get together and they make magic. Now, Joe Coonan has a new album coming out in about another month or so, right, Joe? A uh, single coming out from the album. Yeah, okay. in a month. It's a single. We go through this every week. It's a single from the album coming out next week. Okay, but I didn't go through it for them. Why is Joe getting snippy? Joe. <laughs> it's been a long fucking day, man. It's I can been tell a long day, right, Joe? Now, I got to tell you yeah, something, everybody. you guys hear me? What, that? It's all good, though. I'm happy to be here, though. It's all good. Oh, it's all good. And when we met Joe, he came in and played one night by himself with, with Alex Morovacek, and then he brought his whole band in. The whole band is Joe Coonan and the Hungry Hound. The Hounds could not make it today, so we called these two unbelievable musicians from right in our area here, and they're gonna uh, give you a quick tune. Please welcome Joe Coonan and the boys, everybody. Thank you. 
Joe, there's like a Joe. Now, there's, I mean, these guys, they're great, right? Yeah. But, but that guitar, now when I taught you to play guitar, Joe, let me ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, that was great. And we're here some more for you later, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, you can jam it up with us. Yeah. Joe Coonan, by the way, Joe, I want you to know something. So, you know, I'm a big, big Springsteen fan. And I think you're looking at the beginning, right? This is the very beginning of, I think, going to be an amazing career, right? Like, you're a young kid and you're getting better, better. Our fans love you. Yeah, like they really every do. week more and more. They and really tonight, do. in honor of you, we're gonna tell uh, what we think is our, our favorite Bruce Springsteen story. Yeah, All right. cool. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people have met Springsteen, and uh, we didn't meet him, but we met. Well, we met Jane Fonda. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. And I that kind of almost relates. Uh, so here's what happened: we went to see uh, Springsteen live on Broadway, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and tickets for that were expensive. Right, except we thought we were getting them for free. Yeah, a friend of mine <laughs> called up. He goes, hey, I can get you tickets for Springsteen on Broadway. And I'm like, I'm in. Get me tickets for Springsteen on Broadway. He goes, listen, I know uh, Springsteen's team, and you're going to get great seats, and I'm going to hook you up, right? Mm -hmm. Hook you up. Now, listen, someone has to explain to my friend what the phrase hook you up means. Because to me, if someone says I'm going to hook you up, that's, that's a good thing, okay? What he meant was clearly different. Right, like hook you up and tickets are $800 each. No, they no, don't no. equate. No, they were $1,500 each. Oh, were they that much? Yeah, I, I think didn't you kept that, that part from me. <laughs> I so, think you kept that part. You told me they're $800. Yeah, what happens is he goes, listen, he goes, Springsteen's team is going to call you tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, my God. I wonder if I'm going to get, like, <laughs> someone high up on the team and I get a, I, some woman called you up. She goes, hi, I'm with John. I'm with John. That's John Landau. She's talking like I should know John. And she goes, uh, I understand you want tickets. I've got you great seats. There are 11 rows back, center stage. And I'm, I'm smoking a fake cigar. I'm over. I'm like, what? I can't be six rows back. And then she goes, all I need 
is your credit card. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't even want to think about what this is going to cost. So they were 1500 each, mm -hmm. right? But we got to beat the Ticketmaster fees. Oh, yeah, we got to save $20. Yeah, we saved $20. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so, so we go and we drive up. I have to buy the tickets. I can't say, hey, I'm sorry to inconvenience you. I can't act like, well, yeah, I want to see them. Yeah, you couldn't possibly say, wow, that's the price of a vacation. No, thank you. Like, yeah. Those so, words couldn't come out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, so, so I buy the tickets. And, and Vicky the whole time, she's like, I don't even like Springsteen that much. And I'm like, all right, well, you're going to have to go or I'm bringing somebody else. And so we go. Well, for the, the price of a vacation, I'm going. Yeah. And I'm liking it. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Hell or high water, I'm going. Yeah, and then, and then she doesn't want to go. And she spends three hours getting ready. I'm like, why do you care what you look like? You didn't even want to go. Just get in the car. Now, we get, we get there so late. Mm -hmm. And as we pull up to the theater, there's a guy in the front. And he waves us into a parking spot right in front of the theater. I mean, like, right there. And right behind us are Springsteen's SUVs. And I'm like, OK, this, this works. And the guy just goes, yeah, the spot's open. You can have it. Now, we get out, and people are, are looking at us like, well, they must be somebody. Now, this just had nothing to do with the tickets. It just happened. Right. And now people are walking by Springsteen's two SUVs, and, they're like, oh, and they can't see in the windows. But ours aren't tinted, so they could see in the back, like McDonald's wrappers and Cheerios from my kids and Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. It's like a complete pigsty. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, Springsteen, people are pigs. And uh, we go in, and we're 11 rows back. Yeah. And comes right in front of us, sits, like, there. I can reach out, put my hands on her shoulder. Was Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. So I, so she sits down, and I see them all file in. And Vinny had um, left the row to go talk to the two gentlemen, that, the one that got us the tickets. It was him yeah. and um, a weatherman. Like it from, I like wanted to punch him in the face, but I didn't want to get thrown out of the theater. So I went to say hi, but I also wanted to strike him. Right. So, so they're talking, and then I watched Jane Fonda's son walk up. Now, I love that show, um, Grace, Grace and Frankie on Netflix. Love Frankie, that show. Frank, you love Frankie and Grace. Whatever. I yeah, love well, the show. I'm just saying. Yeah. I love that show. <laughs> well, I watch every episode. I love so that anyway. show, Chow, about the bar. Yeah. Cheers. It matters. Okay. Well, anyway. So I watch her son walk up, and um, I, I say to Vinny, like, so I'm watching, Vinny's talking to him, and <laughs> Vinny says to him, so he just jumped into the conversation with Vinny and his two friends, and so somehow it comes up what he does, and so Vinny goes, so what do you do? And he goes, I'm an actor, and Vinny's like, I'm a comedian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he just said that to Jane Fonda's son. So Vinny sits down, and I go, Vinny, you were just talking to Jane Fonda's son. And he goes, what? Who? I go, did he say his name was Troy? And he goes, yeah. I go, yeah, that's Troy Garrity. That's Jane Fonda's son. And Jane Fonda's in front of us. And now, can I just ask yeah. the crowd something? Does anybody here know who Jane Fonda's son is? Anybody at all? No. All right. No. I read People Magazine quite often. <laughs> Vicky's acting like I just talked to Jesus. That was Jesus. Didn't you see the holes in his hands? I'm like, okay, Jane Fonda's son, big deal. I'm sitting, and now I'm impressed because Jane Fonda's frail little body is right in front of me. <laughs> She's, I can put my hands on Jane Fonda's shoulders. Now, also, two rows up yeah. was... Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. And I say to Vicky, I'm going to go meet Sylvester Stallone. And Vicky goes, don't. You're going to get us thrown out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go meet him. So I walk up to, to Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. She's waiting for me to get thrown out. And I, I look up, I go, hey, and I put, I put my hand out, and he goes to shake my hand. They go, hey, Sylvester, I'm Vinnie Brand. Now, a lot of stars are not cool. Sylvester Stallone goes, hey, Vinnie, <laughs> like, yeah. which I thought was adorable. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And he took a picture with you. He was taking pictures with everybody. He was taking pictures with people. Yeah, he was yeah. so cool. But I wanted to be super cool, so I didn't want to ask for a picture. I thought he should have said, can I get a picture with you? That's right. how I looked at it. And then we met the guy from... Uh, Benicio Del Toro was there. Yep. And then so was the guy from Mayhem who played uh, Tina Fey's boyfriend on 30 Rock. Yeah, when you say Mayhem, he's from the Allstate Mayhem yeah. commercial. Yeah. yeah. You have to be a little bit more... <laughs> I love that show, Frankie and Ted. So anyway, <laughs> so now 
the whole show goes, and Springsteen's great. He's, it really is great. Yeah. Okay, and, and Vicky is highly irritated during the whole show. Because Jane Fonda does not sit still. So she sat the whole show doing this. And, <laughs> and so because the seats are so expensive, you know when somebody moves and you're in a theater, so then you have to adjust? But I can't adjust because in my mind, I'm like, somebody paid just as much as I did for the tickets behind me. So it would be super rude if I keep moving to see, because Jane Fonda is mo moving, and it just, she did not sit still. For an 85-year-old woman, she can bebop a lot. Yeah, so, so Vicky goes from me offending Jane Fonda's son to wanting to murder Jane Fonda. Oh, she's just it's annoying. Like $3,000, and she's like this. Springsteen's in the middle of this great story, and Vicky's going, I just want to kill her. I'm like, I think it would be wrong. So now at the end of the show, mm -hmm. we have not met Jane Fonda. And mm -hmm. I say to Vicky, I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and say hello. And Vicky goes, you cannot tap Jane Fonda. And I go, that sounds weird <laughs> when you say it that way. Is it? <laughs> and by the way, I think I could tap Jane Fonda if I put the time in, maybe bought a dinner. <laughs> okay. Who's hitting on Jane Fonda? I think if I buy a dinner, talk to her, maybe I do get to tap yeah, Jane Fonda. Maybe you do. So, so she's going, you're going to get in trouble. I go, I'm not getting in trouble. I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and say hi. And I tap her on the shoulder. And let me tell you something right now. If you're a Jane Fonda fan and you go to tap her on the shoulder, be ready to be creeped out just a little bit. Because Jane needs a hamburger worse than anybody I know. It was just like tapping a skeleton <laughs> that would be bopping, right? Yeah, and she did not appreciate you tapping her. She did not appreciate it. And right away, a guy comes over, and he's, he's right in my face immediately. And I go, ah, what's wrong? And he goes, please don't tap Jane Fonda. I'm like, why does everybody think I'm going to tap Jane Fonda? <laughs> so that's how we met Jane, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, it's not like we're BFFs, obviously. And so. how great was Springsteen on Broadway? It, it, was, it was really awesome. Right. And so now we're coming out of the theater, and Springsteen's not in his car yet, but everyone's kind of milling around his car, and we get in our car, and we drive away, and I could see people, like, taking pictures of us as we went away, and I think all they kept thinking was, those people were pigs, they should clean the car. Yeah, I don't think that. That's what yeah, I thought yeah. they said. So we got a lot of show. You guys yeah, ready to get our show started? Let me hear you loud and clear. <laughs> so, Vicki, we did, we did this. We did this couple early on. With no audience. No audience. They worked right. with absolutely zero people in mm -hmm. the room. It was me and you, Yeah. a couple cameras. Mm -hmm. I don't even think Joe. No, Joe was there. Was Joe there that day? Yeah, Joe was there with Tom. Joe is not there now. No, Joe, Joe stepped away. But um, Joe was there with Tom and Carrie. He was there. OK, so, so now we're going to bring up Carrie, right? Yeah. So listen. Uh, right now, I'm going to bring up a very good friend of ours. She did the show with no one in the room. She's a fantastic comic, one of the best comics She's in New amazing. York City, a regular amazing. all over. She's got a lot of stuff on Facebook, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff on YouTube. You've seen her on Comedy Central. You heard her on Sirius Satellite Radio. Please give me a warm, loud welcome to our friend, Carrie Louise, everybody. The new norm, oh my God. I am just so excited that I am even out of the house. I'm just so excited. Are you guys excited that you're out of the house? Oh my God, I'm not even a comic. I just really needed to wear some clothes and do my hair and makeup, so thanks. It's nice to be here. Oh my God, this is, you know, when he said no one was in the crowd when we first did this, it's because no one could be in the crowd, just so you know. It's not like no one showed up. Just, it sounded bad, didn't it sound bad? Like, no one was here when she was here. No one. <laughs> it was just because it was the time that no one could show up. All right, so anyway, welcome. Oh my God, I, uh, you know, I love this, this COVID thing. You know, there's good news and bad news about it, right? Have you found the silver lining? I hope you guys found the silver lining to, to uh, be in quarantine and all that stuff. Uh, like, I found that I don't need a whole lot of toilet paper to wipe myself. Found that out. That was, uh, that, that's the good news. The bad news is I should have stocked up on wine. Who knew, right? Who knew? And, and seriously, why were they hoarding toilet paper? Seriously. Has anyone wiped themselves? Have you gone camping? Haven't you wiped yourself with a leaf before and when times are bad? Come on, you, or a sock? 
How about that? We all have that one sock lying around. There, I solved that problem. And now, you know what they're hoarding now? Just read, toilet paper's come back, but they're hoarding paper towel. Have you had a hard time finding lately a paper towel? I cannot, and I found out that I cannot live without bounty. You can't get the cheap paper towel. I need bounty. I have become, week after week, a bounty hunter. That's what I've become. And uh, so that's the good news. The, some more good news. Um, I don't, good news is I don't mind wearing my mask. I like it. Because you know why? It hides my resting bitch face. So that's nice. Yes. And I don't, <laughs> I don't eat as much with a mask. You know, you don't need so losing some calories, losing some weight. That's the good news. Bad news is I passed out on smelling my own breath last week. So good news is my husband is around a lot more to help out around the house. That's good. Bad news is my husband is around a lot more to help out around the house. Uh, good news is the kids uh, are going back to school, a hybrid. Your kids going back to school, like pack, you know, sort of, sometimes, yes, maybe. That's good news. Bad news is uh, I suspended them last spring. Yeah, for running in the hallways, talking back to the teacher, and having a food fight. How many kids are going back to school? Yes? Ran around of applause, people? Going back to school? Yeah. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yeah, tell me, yeah? Go ahead. We have, we have a, no one here has kids. Okay, there we go, we got one person. What are you guys, you guys are all, uh, you're all like young, yeah, no wonder you're looking at me like, who the hell are you? You have a husband, what's that? I just wanna have sex and drink and get up. Yeah, look at this boy band, holy shit. Are you guys, do you work for these group? Give them a round of applause, give the, the hounds a round of applause. Hungry hounds. Hungry Hounds? Yes. Woohoo! There we go. Uh, they were great. Yeah. Oh, so I have to do my young shit. Oh, my God. Um, okay. Well, do I, do I dress? You know, do I dre did I dress young? Yeah. All right. There we go. Oh, I got an applause break from the sexy girl, which I was totally checking out. Very nice. I love, I love what you're wearing, too. A little slutty. But um, I'm kidding, I'm joking. I just did a bitch move on you because you're sexy and young and I'm jealous. That's what women do all the time. We do bitch moves all the time. We do them to our best friends, right? We're like, oh my God, I love your hair extensions. <laughs> right, I bet you said that to her. She said that to you, this whole thing. What are you, the gay guy with this, gr this group? Yeah, this girls. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew it, I knew it. Well, this whole outfit that you see, right? Look at, I, I don't even know if I can, I'm like, I'm, um, I don't even know, I'm a mom, I don't even, I can't even pull off this outfit with the jeans and stuff, I don't give a shit, but you know, I'm going, I'm, I'm going out, so I wore my best. But all, this whole outfit, even the bling, even the choker, I have a choker on, look at that. Right, I am, all right. 50 years old with a choker, all right. Everything you see, Kohl's cash, right here, no lie. Yes, I love Kohl's cash. I didn't think, oh, now, I, now I'm with my people. I didn't think you knew Kohl's Cash here in Connecticut. I didn't think you guys, I thought you guys pay, pay full price. I love, it's a love-hate, Kohl's Cash is a love-hate thing because you get that Kohl's Cash. Have you ever had that expire in your wallet? Oh my God, you hate yourself for a month. You just like every day you wanna fucking kill yourself. That's how bad. The next time you go in, you next time you have that Kohl's cash, you're like, I'm gonna beat the system. You know what I'm talking about, right, mama? Yes, I know that's your daughter, right? Do I know, yeah, is that, yeah. So, yeah, so where we go? There's another one my age, all right. So yeah, it's, you, it's a love-hate thing. When you get that $10, you're like, I'm gonna beat the system. I know what they're doing. I'm going in, I'm getting a $10 shirt, socks, something, out. That's it, scarf, out, going in and out. In a, $250 later, and more Kohl's cash. It's a vicious circle. Have you ever done the Kohl's cash and the 30% and the $5 yes? Oh, yeah, you did it. That is, that is the bargain cent. That's a triple trifecta bargain century. That is, you have not lived, gay guy. You have not lived until you've done that. To me, firing a bargain is like having an orgasm. Well, not really. I mean, if you think about it, I couldn't fake a bargain. So it's not quite like that. Do I have to explain that to the boy band? Do I have to explain that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake, all right, whatever. All right, so. Going back to school, this is dedicated to the teacher going back to school. Give her a round of applause and all the other teachers. We have to, uh, we, you know, everybody's working. It's tough. I, I, work, I do Zooms. That's like the hard, I do, I did, I, my last gig was in a, a parking lot with cars. I had beeping for applause. That's what I had. Uh, yeah, so we're all working under uh, difficult situations. I'm sure you guys are too. I mean, my town, going back, the re-entry plan, I swear to God, they try to make it so easy. This is how easy it is. 
This is the this is the going the reentry plan for my school. I'm sure your school was is was the same. So everyone going back to school will be put on a one two three cohorts. These cohorts will be. Um, will be going every third day. And on the seventh day, everybody will stay home for remote learning. That seventh day will be on a two-hour delay, maintaining our A and B schedules. We will not maintain our C schedules because C begins with COVID, and we don't want anybody to be reminded of COVID. Unless, of course, it's a snow day, then we'll be doing the C day. But then that's only ca called the catch-up day. Students going to school will be getting their temperature checked. Everyone needs their temperature checked by our new scanning devices. Unless, of course, your student went to a high-risk state. That's not Connecticut. You guys never been high-risk, thank God. Yes, round of applause for that. Unless your student went to a high-risk state, then that student needs to get their temperature checked by the school nurse the baby way. That would be in the rectum. That would be. Are you going back to school? You guys look like you're in school now. Unless, of course, you know Miley Cyrus, then you do not need your temperature checked. Do not. If you know Miley Cyrus, you're in good news. You are exempt as long as you tell everybody you had sex with. Parents dropping their kids off at school will go drop their kids off counterclockwise in the parking lot on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Friday, you go, you go, counter, you go clockwise, but you have to get out of your car and do your best TikTok and present of Cardi B, number one hit song, Wet Ass Pussy. That's the number one hit song, Wet Ass Pussy. Can you play that song? Do you know how to play that? Hungry Hounds, do you know how to play Wet Ass Pussy? That's the sad thing, that is the number one song. No, you don't know that one. <laughs> that, that's the sad thing. And so homeschooling, half the day I have to homeschool my kids. You don't want me homeschooling, I am dumb. They said I have dyslexia, a little. Don't worry about me, I don't have it all the time, just when I read. I know, I swear, I swear to dog I have it. You guys do too for not getting that joke, dog, God. All right, whatever. Uh, my mom has dyslexia. I think that's why I have it, but it doesn't really affect our relationship. I wanted to ask her to go out to lunch on 57th Street, but I really meant to say 75th Street, and she switched it in her mind, and we met there, and no one knew, so. I was in the lowest reading group when I was little. Now, I knew I was in the lowest reading group, but the teacher tried to be creative as naming the groups as animals, so we wouldn't know. I knew. You know, I may be dumb. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Because she's like, the giraffes go in that corner and read, and the tigers go in that corner and read, and the slugs, that's you, Carrie. Go back to first grade. Yeah, so I, uh, I, uh, I'm not smart. My, um, I'm, you know, numbers screw me up. Not all numbers. I like 11. That's my favorite number. I'll never forget my grandmother. She was choking in my kitchen, and I, and I, uh, I uh, kept on dialing 119. <sighs> Gonna miss her. <laughs> My kids don't have it, though. They're so smart. I'm at the spelling stage for them. I have to talk. I have to spell, because if I, they know what I'm talking about, they know everything. So I remember one day I wanted to ask my, this summer, I'm like, honey, do you want to go out for an ice cream? I mean, an I-C-E, I before E, except after, I, hey, do you want to? Next thing you know, he's in the bedroom naked. I just wanted ice cream, people. That's it. That's my time. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, I like that. I like it. Joe, in a minute, I got a question for you. Leave Joe lit up. By the way, as an audience, uh, thank you for coming out, right, Sunday night, first time ever. I'm going to ask you to do two things. Number one, I need you to be, like, more emotive, right? Even if you have to fake it, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. I want you to be more emotive. Like, that woman right there, you've been great the whole time, laughing, yeah, you having have. fun. And the woman in red, the two guys, like, just not there uh, emotionally. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just, yeah, Connecticut's a very, um, Connecticut has to be broken down. It's a very, like, Jersey's a fun, live audience. Connecticut's very foo-foo. They think they're very much, <laughs> no, they do. Connecticut people think they're better than people from New Jersey. Did you know that? I, I did not know that. Oh, my God. How many people here that. think you're better than the people from New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and this is from a group of people that decided to live not only with Route 95, but with Ned Lamont. And <laughs> I, I thought we, we, we're not necessarily, uh, we like Ned, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Did what you know? Did you know? Huh? What do we have not to like about him? Well, the fact that he shut the world down. Well, I, yeah. I want you to know something. Uh, I think that this Connecticut has become more fun since we've been here. The first couple shows, you remember I come home and tell you, right? Like we had a guy come in one day and he sat in the front and he bought a VIP ticket and he wanted to sit all by himself with nobody else, just him and his wife. And his wife had a satellite dish on her ring finger. It was just, mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. I'm like, oh my God, how many people in Africa died to get that out of the, <laughs> out of the rocks for it's you? Bloodstone. And he was very, very, uh, this is not how we do things. They'd, someone get my Tesla. And, and I was like, listen, sir, you're gonna sit in here and we're gonna jam you together. It's gonna be tight mm -hmm. and you're gonna have fun the way a comedy club is meant to be, right? Yep. Tight together. Uh, and, and he was very upset. And I said, don't be upset. Every single show, somebody in our audience gets pregnant and that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Because it's so tight together. And his wife did not laugh at that joke. No, she didn't appreciate it. She was it. like, someone polished my diamonds. And then at the end of the show, the guy goes, no, no, before the show, he goes, the next time I come, I'm buying the whole floor so I can sit by myself in the middle. And I'm like, something tells me from your personality that sitting by yourself is not always a problem. <laughs> yeah. It seems like that, you could do a lot. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the show, we was all crammed together. We sat him with another couple. And the couple we sat him with, the guy was a plumber. So he's sitting with a Connecticut plumber. And Connecticut plumbers would fit right in with Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. So he's sitting with a Connecticut plumber and his wife. And he, he, I, I really think at one point, he wanted to Lysol them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after the show, I go up to him, I go, what'd you think? And he goes, you were right. This was the effing best. It's like his whole demeanor changed into a normal human being. Uh, and that's what we're going to try and do with you people. Although you two broads right there fit right in. Your husband, <laughs> your husbands are awful. I, I, you have children or no? You do have children. I'm assuming adoption because these two guys, <laughs> there's no way these two guys. Uh, oh, you, that's your son? Yeah. It's what? That's her son. Which one's her son? In the red. Oh. Oh, I, who, well, who's the, oh, is that the son's girlfriend? Nice, are you gonna marry her? Well, how long have you been together, sir? What an uncomfortably difficult moment for her to find yeah. out that she's wasting her time. <laughs> how long uh, have you guys been together? Are you gonna marry him? And the guy like goes, ah! Three years? Three years you've been together? And the conversation hasn't come up? Let me tell you what Vicky oh, said. Oh, boy! Let me Hello. tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you exactly what Vicky said at the three-year mark. We were at dinner, and mm -hmm. I knew she wanted to get serious, and she looked across the table with a little candlelight, and she said, I'm pregnant. And no, I didn't. <laughs> that did not happen. That did not happen, right? She asked me, I did not want to get married again, because I was married once, and uh, my first marriage was, uh, what's that word? Awful. And yeah, I married, like, I, she, was a, she was tough. <laughs> was it my marriage? I don't so know. So I'm, I'm dating Vicky, and she's a little older than me. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and Vicky said to me, "I need to know if if I'm wasting my time, or if you'd get married and have children again." And I remember looking across the table, thinking, "I'm never, ever getting married again. Never. I would, I would, I would rather live by myself in a cave." But then I looked at her and I said, "Well, that girl I'd marry." So I said, "Well, if the right girl, I would marry the right girl." And then a couple months later, I asked you to marry me. Yep, 25. We've been together 25, married 22. But what, let's circle back to this woman here. Yes, okay. Um, let's circle back to her. Let's focus I was on you. To, I was trying to take the boy off the, the hot seat because I could hear his testicles shrinking from here. <laughs> I want him to relax. So what do you do for work, young man? He works for the city. So you got a good pension. And what do you do? She's a waitress. All right, good. Well, mm -hmm. let me tell you something right now. I, I think you should get married. And uh, mom, do you like the girl? She loves huh? her. She loves her. She doesn't like her. She yeah, loves her. Yeah, but what her. is she supposed to say right now? No, she could say, I like her. No. But she right. elevated it to, I love her. Yeah, but that's, that's a practice thing. She's like, I got, I love you, locked <laughs> and loaded. The holidays are coming. I love her. Remember my son at Christmas. <laughs> no, good for you. Good luck. And I hope you do marry her, young man. And I hope that someday along down the line, you're happy and you go, you know what? Vinny and Vicky are the reason we got together. Mm -hmm.
Joe, I asked you a few weeks ago uh, if you could do a theme song for me, for when I'm out and about and I need to hear something in my head to make me feel good. Did you? And you well, no. What you asked was five minutes before we were on stage. You said, <laughs> "Hey, man, write a riff for me to play right now." And how that's what I here, did. How many people here are positive Joe smokes pot? <laughs> The band behind you is like, this is going to work out. Joe, I think it's good to expand your mind. Joe, I love you so much, you know that. And I know you're going to be a big star. Love do, you too, man. Do you have anything ready for me? Yeah, let's go. Let's hear it. All right. This is my theme song. <laughs> oh, this is not your theme song. Oh, shit. talented these men are because Joe turned and they said let's just go with it yeah. and John and Greg jumped right in and they were so they just pulled that all together that's incredible yeah, I love it and after the show the show's gonna end after Tom Cotter right? right but that's the live show that we're broadcasting and I'm gonna ask you people in the audience right now do me a favor go on your cell phone right now and just share the show on your Facebook it's not hard to do it's important okay Facebook sir is an internet thing you're a little bit too old just Go home and mail your friend a letter, let them know. And, uh, and then afterward, Joe will play, and Tom will do another set, Carrie will do a set. Right. We'll have a little bit of fun after the show. Right. So before you bring up Tom, so I keep looking at this young lady, because she looks, I, I'm like, she looks like a model or... Are you a then, model? No, but, but then it, it occurred to me, she huh? looks like a young Brooke Shields. She looks like a young Brooke Yeah, Shields. you know what? You do look yes. like a young Brooke Shields. Yes, a young Brooke yeah. She doesn't, I don't think she knows who Brooke Shields is. Yeah. You, do you know? Yeah. You know what I just saw? I just saw this guy go, oh, let me take a look at that. <laughs> good, all right, good deal. Yeah. What do you do? Are you not a model? No, what? she's not a model. But I she... heard it say that. What do you do? She works in life insurance. In life insurance? I wouldn't yeah. buy life insurance from someone like that. I... <laughs> you, you want an old, ugly guy selling life insurance. Yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. some... <laughs> Girl, looks like she's ready to go out dancing. Yeah, you need a whole life. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to you. I want an old, grizzled man. Mm -hmm, I want mm -hmm. like Danny Roach, just an old. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ready for more show? Let me hear you loud and clear. No, I'm not doing it for that. I want to hear some noise. Let me hear you. All right. So, I. I love this next comic. This guy's app. Yeah, you can play. Go ahead. I love this next comic. He was a finalist on America's Got Talent. You've seen him all over Comedy Central. You heard him on Sirius Satellite Radio. One of our personal favorites and a good friend. Please welcome Tom Cotter. <laughs> Everybody, there they go right there. How about it for Minnie and Vicky? And the band. And they are diseased. Hi, everybody. How are you? We saved these two tables for my parents again. Excellent. Now, uh, I got to do this quickly. I'm going to throw, I do a lot of one liners, mostly cocaine, so I talk fast. So you got to stay on your toes like a dwarf at a urinal. First thing I want to do is I got to pick up Sylvester Stallone and uh, Jane Fonda because they dropped a lot of names. I don't know if you saw that in their first story. And it's a Swiffer, not a Swifter, all right? I'm just uh, fact-checking. Uh, Swifter? No. Anyway, so I, uh, I, I'm thrilled to be here uh, in, in wherever the hell I am. I, uh, 
I'm, I'm in a good mood. I don't know why I'm in a good mood. I don't have the COVID. That's a good thing, right? I don't. Every day, it's a respiratory thing. So every day I wake up, I do a series of deep breaths through a bong, and then I forget about COVID, and I French kiss people. Now, I, uh, yeah, I'm very nervous about the COVID. I really I wear a mask all the time. I'm wearing one right now, but I wear mine as a thong. And I'll tell you why. Because I feel pretty safe. Uh, well, not, not safe, but I feel pretty. I feel very pretty. Pretty uncomfortable because the twins are separated right now. I don't know how you women do that. I also, uh, I wear a mask whenever I go outside. I wore a mask to the grocery store yesterday and only a mask. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Social distancing was not an issue. Everybody fled. Uh, now the president has it. It's all messed up. I don't like that whole thing. And I'm already worried about my health. I just turned 40 in 2005, and my body <laughs> is not cooperating with middle age. And don't do it, by the way. I, uh, I have been married for five wonderful years, 17 total, and I know some things about marriage. <laughs> don't get engaged. Um, you don't want to tie the noose, the knot. Anyway, I will tell you that I... I got married because I was sick and tired of finishing my own sentences. So that's working out pretty well. And I just didn't want to live without decorative pillows in my life anymore because nothing fills me with joy like removing 17 goddamn pillows off my bed before I can get into the bed. Pillows that, by the way, I'm not allowed to touch otherwise, those pillows. Like the good towels that I'm not allowed to touch that have my goddamn initials on them and were given to me by my sister at her wedding, I'm not allowed to touch. I have to use the bounty, but we can't find bounty, so now I'm using shit. Now, all right. Uh, sir, close your legs. I'm a nut allergy, and you're sitting like a porn star. All right. Anyway, I, uh, I, I, my wife was the last young lady up here uh, besides Vinny and Vicky, so it's Vinny, Vicky, uh, my wife, and Icky, apparently, but that's all right. And we, uh, we, we, we've been married a long time, and these are jokes. I love my wife. I prefer monogamy because I'm not good with names, so it's good for me. And... To her credit, she got me to quit smoking because I only smoke after sex, so I haven't had a cigarette in 11 goddamn years, so that's pretty good. And, and she took my name in marriage, and everyone calls her Needle Dick. It's hysterical. Now, we, uh, we, uh, we have a great time. You gotta have fun, That's because marriage changes you. People think, oh, marriage won't change me. Yes, it will. It changes dramatically. When we were dating, my wife and I, I would open the car door for her, which I still do now, but now we're doing 70, and I'm pushing, a little different. And Snoring has become a major issue. Let me ask, does he snore? And how do you know that if you're not married? Sinner! Look away, everybody, look away. Shun them. I, uh, I snored the day my wife and I met. My snoring has never changed. Her reaction is what has changed dramatically, because when we were dating, she said my snoring was cute. She said I sounded like a teddy bear growling. Those were her words, ladies and gentlemen. But that's when she was trying to lure me in, right? When she was a penis flytrap, but then, once we got married, it wasn't cute anymore. On the honeymoon, she started with a nudge when I would snore, and over time, the nudge begat a shove, and now she throws an elbow that would get her thrown out of a cage match. Seriously. Two weeks ago, I'm sound asleep snoring, she pinched my nostrils together, which is attempted murder, and it's bullshit. Anyway, and sex. People that go, I'm getting married. I'll have sex whenever I want it. <laughs> That's adorable. I will tell you that once they say I do, they don't. And you know you haven't made love in way too long when little things start to arouse you, like sticking your key in the ignition. That shouldn't get you going, right? The other day I was sharpening a pencil, and I swear to God I said, take it all, you whore. That's not right. I walked into a Kentucky Fried Chicken recently, and the girl behind the counter offered me a juicy breast or a juicy thigh, and I had to turn around and walk the hell out of the restaurant. And I choked my own chicken in the parking lot. And that's just sad, everybody. Pounding your poultry in the parking lot. So, I love my wife, though. I really do. And when I heard early on about COVID, uh, they said one of the first symptoms is difficulty swallowing. So I was like, whoa, she's had this for 10 years. Anyway, uh, too soon? Too soon on that? Anyway, we have fun, though. We do. We have fights. We're in you know, Married comedy couple, because who needs health insurance? So that was a good idea. And uh, people, they go, oh, you must laugh all the time. We laugh. We laugh a fair amount. But we also have arguments. We have stupid fights, too. We had a fight the other night because I peed in the shower on her leg. But I was, uh, I was just marking my territory. Anyway, uh, 
The other night she threw a cocktail at me, Molotov. I thought that was a little over the top. But I found out recently, this is another fight we had, I found out recently when I go on the road to perform, she invites the dog up onto the bed. You know, the bounty hunter from cable TV? And that pissed me off. New joke, might keep it. Anyway, last night she said I was suffocating her. I think that's what she said. The pillow was muffling her voice, but... Uh, and that joke is brought to you by MyPillow.com. Now, Dr. Phil says if you're arguing with your spouse, which is inevitable, it'll happen to you guys, what happens is you should try to see things from your spouse's point of view. That's what Dr. Phil says. So whenever we have an argument, I put myself in her shoes and her stockings and her bra and her panties and her scrunchie. And when you're standing there wearing stiletto heels, fishnet stockings with an underwire bra and a thong up the crack of your ass, it dawns on you. This is why she's irritable. I get it now. <laughs> Dr. Phil's a genius. Questions? I feel like I'm dominating this conversation. I feel like it's all about me. Yes, what do you have, sir? Take your time. Bring my show to a screeching halt while you dig deep into that marijuana-impaired brain and pull out something. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm intrigued. What do you have for me, sir? Did you say women are women or women on women? Women on women. I'm getting a chubby just thinking about it right now, sir. I'm, I'm Irish. It's not gonna, like I'm going to put anyone's eye out in the front row. But uh, yeah, that's super hot. Anyway, thank you for that. Now, <laughs> what's making it worse is I'm watching these young ladies eat mozzarella st sticks <laughs> with mozzarella cheese coming off of it as you're talking to me about women on women. I really am getting a boner. It's sad. I'm Irish. It's invisible, but it's there. I could make love to a Cheerio and not break it. That's sad. I, uh, I wouldn't. I'm not a serial rapist. Now, let's move on. A lot of these jokes are time release. May not be funny tonight, but uh, tomorrow you're going to shit your pants, everybody. All right? And by the way, not lost on me that he, I, lo I was on America's Got Talent, and I came in second, sounds okay, lost to a dog act, that's the truth. I came in second to a dog act in front of 20 million fucking viewers. I was defeated by non-humans, butt sniffers, toilet drinkers. Not only did they win the entire million dollar prize, they could lick themselves, so they went on every level, and tonight they're headlining at Caesars Palace, and I'm in front of 20 fucking people. But, uh, but great people, you're great people. But it's not lost on me that Vinny hired a band called The Hounds. What the fuck is that all about? That is passive aggressive. Anyway, I like dogs. I, uh, we have a lab. It's a meth lab, but we guard it with pit bulls. And we also have a Dalmatian. We named him G-Spot because we can never find him. Now, let's move on. Questions? Anything else? Mm. Now, you two are married how long? Too long. All right, that's going to get you laid tonight saying that. Uh, I like being, it took me a long time to find the right one, really, uh, you know, yeah. and she kissed a lot of frogs uh, along the way. I tried the computer thing, not easy. I uh, dated a nice Jewish girl, we met on Christian Mingle, that was weird, and then I dated an arsonist, we met on Match.com, that was strange. Her profile said she could light up a room, she was not messing around, I'll tell you that right now. And ironically, that ended with a burning sensation when I would urinate, so I'm glad that was over, and then I dated a really tall woman, we met on Amazon.com, and then an older woman, we met on Ancestry.com, and uh, pick the ones you like, everybody. Let's move on. All right, now, you're just bitter the Giants lost today, probably, some of you, right? Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, but at least sports are back. I love that, you know, it's autumn now, and I love autumn. I think we're coming around the corner with this thing. I came home the other night, my wife was curled up in front of the fireplace with an Afghan. So I grabbed him by the beard and beat him with the sandals and said, get the hell out of my house. But I, uh, I like the autumn because we have baseball playoffs now, which I love. And I, I actually played minor league baseball, very minor, little league is what it was called. And my mom was the coach and she traded me. I'll never get over that. But uh, I played football in high school. It was fantasy football, but I was very good. And uh, in college, I did some wrestling. I didn't want to, but my roommate was the 300-pound gay man, and he found me attractive when he drank, and he was an alcoholic, and he won every match. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, I love sports. I play tennis on grass, because I hit the ball better when I'm high. And some of you are getting all these jokes, and some of you should slip into something more comfortable like a coma. Holy shit. All right, now, 
I, uh, I do like the fall, though. It's great. I went apple picking last weekend. That's what I called it. The judge called it shoplifting from the Apple store or whatever. But I, uh, <laughs> I got an iPad, an iPhone, but there are all these eyewitnesses. So that didn't work out so well. I had needed a new phone. I, needed, I had the iPhone 2, which, as you know, is made of wood. So I had to upgrade. So I got the 8, which is not even close to the best. Now they have the 11 or the, I don't know, the X. I don't know what they are. But I can't even handle the 8. Every time I go to answer it, I take a picture of my ear because I'm an idiot. I got it home from the Apple store, and everyone said, the first thing you should do is sync it with your laptop. So I tossed them both in the pool. And that negates the warranty. I don't know if you're aware of that. I don't deserve a new phone. I'm a tech tard. I really am. I can't, I can't text. Everybody text message now. That's how everyone communicates. And I can't, I'm this idiot. So now they have a thing called talk to text where you can dictate your text message into the phone and then send it out. And I say, if you're going to talk into the phone, make the call, you lazy prick. That's what I say. But and others, I saw this kid in Manhattan, like a nine-year-old kid walking down the street with the iPhone X, the $1,000 iPhone, composing a text like this, two fingers, rapid fire, not even looking at the phone while he's walking down the street. So I tripped him. Fuck him. He doesn't deserve that phone. But I... And I was jealous, because I can't text. And even if I do text, autocorrect kicks in and ruins my text. You ever have that happen? It was my birthday last week. My sister texted, happy birthday, do you feel old? And I texted back, I'm going gray. But autocorrect decided we didn't need the R, so it said, I'm going gay. And then my sister texted back, we always knew. What the fuck is that? That is bullshit, autocorrect. Anyway, I don't belong on the interne internet. I really, I go on. Uh, WebMD a lot. WebMD is my favorite non-porn site. I recommend it. And it's great. You type in your symptoms, and it tells you what you have. And a little good news, everybody. I'm pregnant. Yes, I am. Mazel tov to me. I was on WebMD last week, and I typed in swollen prostates. None of your goddamn business. But I typed it in, and then I accidentally made it my Facebook status. And that led to a lot of defriending. Now, I... Uh, what else can I tell you people about? I don't know. Our president has COVID. How fucked up is that? That's weird, isn't it? It's terrible. I have the COVID. Can't stand it. Don't like the COVID. I won't do too many political things because I know that the nation is very split right now. And who am I to make fun of the president? Because I could never be president. You have to be a naturalized born citizen. And I was C-section. So that wouldn't work out. I don't know. I'm not very... Pl Last time I voted was for Clay Aiken. And he lost to Reuben that season. So I... Uh, but the president's fantastic. He is my hair. Everybody talks to me about my, they say, Donald, how do you get your hair to look so fantastic? I wake up every morning, I walk into my walk-in closet, huge walk-in closet, huge, huge, bigger than Rhode Island. And I shove my head into a cotton candy machine and I whirl it around and around and around. Voila. And Space Force, I just started the first ever Space Force. Very expensive, billions of dollars, but don't worry, Mars is going to pay for it. Um, people say, why didn't you have Governor Chris Christie in your cabinet? Well, I have to tell you, he can't fit in the cabinet. He's huge. Second of all, that man loves cotton candy. He would eat my head. I couldn't have that. And again, just having fun with the president. So if you're a Trump supporter, put the gun down. We're having some fun. I, uh, I he turned the economy around. You've got to give him that. I can't turn my own economy around. I still owe the Columbia Record and Tape Club $10,000. That's sad. Visa and MasterCard call me every week and compliment me. They tell me my balance is outstanding, which is good to hear. And I'm uh, actually coming into some money soon because I have a loose tooth. But I, uh, my problem is I give a certain percentage of my income to the Lord. Javier is a Mexican drug lord, and that is not a good investment. But the president, th I'll leave you with this, but the president has the toughest job in the world, even without COVID. You know, he has to deal with nut jobs like North Korea and, and Iran and ISIS. And I'll tell you something, and don't judge me on this. I hang the ISIS flag in front of my house. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I do that, because I cannot afford a home security system. So <laughs> my house is under 24-hour surveillance <laughs> by the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA for free. God bless America. I'm Tom Cotter. Thanks for showing up, everybody. It's the Vicki and Vinny Show. That was awesome. Tom is so great.
every time we have Tom, he, he messes up all the microphones to get even with us. You guys, uh, let me tell you something. At the beginning, at the beginning, uh, you were very, uh, it was harder for us, right? Because yeah, we're used to quiet. a bigger crowd. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and of course, they weren't emotive until we started talking to them. Mm -hmm. And then we found out that, you know, we thought she was standoffish, mm -hmm. but it turned out she's just an insurance agent. Right, right, right. And they're never fun. No one yeah. ever says, mm -mm. you gotta come with me Friday. I'm hanging out with my whole life insurer. Anyway, <laughs> we had, that was a, a great time. Please give us yeah. a big round of applause for Joe Coonan and the boys, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Clap for Carrie Louise, everybody. Vicky Brand, everybody. Tom Cotter, everybody. I'm Vinny Brand, and what I want you to do for us is I want you to please do two things. First of all, uh, we really need now, we need our Bridgeport fans to get active in promoting the club. We are very committed to this club. We love this area, and we need you to do us a favor. I need you to get on your Facebook, get on your Twitter, and follow it, and like it, and share it, and we'll do it up here again live, yep, yep, and we'll want five times the audience, right? Because I'll tell you something right now. I, we need to keep this club open and fun. Yep. Bridgeport was doing great, and then Ned Lamont said, let's smash Connecticut. So now we need to bring it back. We're going to be like, the, we're gonna be like the, the Lazarus, right? Or Jesus, whatever it is. We're going to bring... I don't know. <laughs> I don't really read the Bible a lot, but we're going to be like that Bible thing that brings it back. So please do us a favor. Share it, like it, yeah. and I promise you, we're going to bring the biggest names in the business to Connecticut every single week. We'll bring this show back to Connecticut. We'll bring the band back to Connecticut. Stay where you are, live audience. You people at home, share it for us. Roll the credits, boys. Get ready to play, Joe. Get it, roll the credits. Play. Thank you. Yeah.